Hello, friends. I'm Pastor Pitts Evans. Welcome to the Whole Word Podcast. Let's get right to the Word of God. Numbers chapter 22. Then the Israelites traveled to the plains of Moab and camped along the Jordan across from Jericho. Now Balak, son of Zippor, saw all that Israel had done to the Amorites, and Moab was terrified because there were so many people. Indeed, Moab was filled with dread because of the Israelites. The Moabites said to the elders of Midian, This horde is going to lick up everything around us as an ox licks up the grass of the field. So Balak, son of Zippor, who was king of Moab at that time, sent messengers to summon Balaam, son of Beor, who was at Pethor, near the Euphrates River, in his native land. Balak said, A people has come out of Egypt. They cover the face of the land, and they've settled next to me. Now come and put a curse on these people, because they're too powerful for me. Perhaps I will be able to defeat them and drive them out of the land. For I know that whoever you bless is blessed, and whoever you curse is cursed." The elders of Moab and Midian left, taking with them the fee for divination. When they came to Balaam, they told him what Balak had said. Spend the night here, Balaam said to them, and I will report back to you with the answer the Lord gives me. So the Moabite officials stayed with him. God came to Balaam and asked, Who are these men with you? Balaam said to God, Balak, son of Zippor, king of Moab, sent me this message. A people that has come out of Egypt covers the face of the land. Now come and put a curse on them for me. Perhaps then I will be able to fight them and drive them away. But God said to Balaam, Do not go with them. You must not put a curse on those people because they are blessed. The next morning Balaam got up and said to Balak's officials, Go back to your own country, for the Lord has refused to let me go with you. So the Moabite officials returned to Balak and said, Balaam refused to come with us. Then Balak sent other officials more numerous and more distinguished than the first. They came to Balaam and said, This is what Balak, son of Zippor, says. Do not let anything keep you from coming to me, because I'll reward you handsomely and do whatever you say. Come and put a curse on these people for me. But Balaam answered them, Even if Balak gave me all the silver and gold in his palace, I could not do anything great or small to go beyond the command of the Lord my God. Now spend the night here so that I can find out what else the Lord will tell me. That night God came to Balaam and said, Since these men have come to summon you, go with them, but do only what I tell you. Balaam got up in the morning, saddled his donkey, and went with the Moabite officials. But God was very angry when he went. And the angel of the Lord stood in the road to oppose him. Balaam was riding on his donkey, and his two servants were with him. When the donkey saw the angel of the Lord standing in the road with the drawn sword in his hand, it turned off the road into a field. Balaam beat it and got it back on the road. Then the angel of the Lord stood in a narrow pathway through the vineyards with walls on both sides. When the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, it pressed close to the wall, crushing Balaam's foot against it. So he beat the donkey again. Then the angel of the Lord moved on ahead and stood in a narrow place where there was no room to turn, either to the right or to the left. When the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, it lay down under Balaam, and he was angry and beat it with his staff. Then the Lord opened the donkey's mouth, and it said to Balaam, What have I done to you to make you beat me these three times? Balaam answered the donkey, You've made a fool of me. If only I had a sword in my hand, I would kill you right now. The donkey said to Balaam, Am I not your own donkey, which you've always ridden to this day? Have I ever been in the habit of doing this to you? No, he said. Then the Lord opened Balaam's eyes, and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the road with his sword drawn. So he bowed down low and fell face down. The angel of the Lord asked him, Why have you beaten your donkey these three times? I have come here to oppose you because your path is a reckless one before me. The donkey saw me and turned away from me these three times. If it had not turned away, I would have certainly killed you by now, but I would have spared it. Balaam said to the angel of the Lord, I have sinned. I did not realize you were standing in the road to oppose me. 
Now, if you are displeased, I will go back. The angel of the Lord said to Balaam, Go with the men, but speak only what I tell you. So Balaam went with Balak's officials. When Balak heard that Balaam was coming, he went out to meet him at the Moabite town on the Arnon border at the edge of his territory. Balak said to Balaam, Did I not send you an urgent summons? Why didn't you come to me? Am I really not able to reward you? Well, I've come to you now, Balaam replied, but I can't say whatever I please. I must speak only what God puts in my mouth. Then Balaam went out with Balak to Kirath Huzoth. Balak sacrificed cattle and sheep and gave some to Balaam and the officials who were with him. The next morning, Balak took Balaam up to Bamoth Baal, and from there he could see the outskirts of the Israelite camp. Now, friends, this is a very, very strange chapter. It's one of three chapters, beginning with this one, that deals with this character known as Balaam. And so Balaam comes seemingly out of nowhere, but he's mentioned frequently from this point on in the Bible. He's mentioned in Deuteronomy, Joshua, three chapters of Numbers deal with him. Nehemiah mentions him. Micah mentions him. In the New Testament, he's mentioned in Second Peter. He's mentioned in Jude. He's mentioned in Revelation. So this guy has, has some impact on Israel and on the people of God. And according to the New Testament, he has a, a future role to play. And so who is Balaam? Who or what is Balaam? Well, he's descended from Abraham, but he's not Jewish. And so it, on some order, he is descended from Abraham. Joshua calls him a soothsayer in Joshua 13. He's referred to as a prophet in Numbers chapter 24. King Balak sends for him to curse Israel. That's his request. And he's rebuked by his donkey, which is very strange. I'll get more into that in a minute. Somehow he gave advice, even though he was not able to curse Israel, somehow he gave advice that led to Israel's corruption. And they are judged for that in a couple of chapters. And then his death is described in Numbers chapter 31. His death is a result of the judgment that came on him for the bad advice he gave Israel's enemies that led them astray. And as I mentioned, he's spoken of in Revelation chapter 2 about some type of sexual sin that's referred to as the sin of Balaam that will be an end time phenomenon. So let's get into this particular chapter. And so we read in verse 1, The Israelites traveled to the plains of Moab and camped along the Jordan across from Jericho, the city of Jericho. They're going to stay in this location until they enter the promised land. We are in um, Numbers chapter 22. They're done with the 40 years of wandering in the wilderness. Um, Deuteronomy is going to recap their travels. But where they're camped out now, they're going to stay until they cross over the Jordan River. And so in verse 2, Balak, this guy Balak, looks around and gathers the leaders of Moab and the Midianite leaders and says, we got to do something because Israel has shown up and they're about to enter our territory. And uh, let's send for Balaam, son of Beor, because he's a powerful soothsayer slash prophet. And uh, we'll get him to put a curse on these people. Because whoever he curses is cursed. Whoever he blesses is blessed. Now, The Lord previously, in Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 through 3, had blessed Abraham and the descendants of Abraham and cursed those who cursed them. So he had blessed those that blessed them and cursed those who cursed them. It's said of this Balaam that God will bless those he blesses and curse those he curses. So Balaam is put into an impossible position of being requested to curse what God has already blessed and to counteract the things of God. And so that can't happen. So the elders of Moab and Midian leave. They take the fee to pay this um, Balaam. They came to him and they they said uh, what their mission was. And uh, Balaam said, spend the night. I'll report back to you the answer the Lord gives me. So this Balaam had some kind of relationship with the Lord. And so they stayed and waited. God came to Balaam, and it is the God of Israel who came to Balaam. And asked, who are these men? And Balaam said, this is Balak, the representatives of Balak, son of Zippor, king of Moab. He's talking about a people that have come out of Egypt to cover the land, and he wants me to put a curse on them. And uh, God said to Balaam, do not go with them. That's verse 12. You must not put a curse on the people because they're blessed. 
I just told you he had blessed Yahweh had blessed them himself in Genesis 12 and in other places. And so the next morning, Balaam gets up and he goes, um, the Lord refused to let me go with you. Now, this seems all well and good. The officials leave. They go back to the king. The king is upset. He ups his offer. He sends more dignified uh, emissaries back. And Balaam answered them, even if Balak gave me all the silver and gold in his palace, I could not do anything great or small to go beyond the command of the Lord my God. And so he's saying that the Lord, Yahweh, is his God. So up through verse 18, we're in good shape. Balaam has not uh, transgressed. But in verse 19, he says, now spend the night here so I can go find out what else the Lord will tell me. Now, friends, this is a problem because God has already spoken. And Balaam is looking at apparently the officials. He's looking at the reward and he wants a different answer. He wants permission to go. And so that night, God comes to Balaam and says, since these men have come, go with them, but only do what I tell you to do. But God was very angry. And so God sent the angel of the Lord to oppose him. And this is where it starts to get bizarre. When the donkey Balaam was riding saw the angel of the Lord with a drawn sword, he turned off the road into a field. And Balaam uh, beat his donkey because he didn't see the angel. Then the angel of the Lord moved forward to another spot, thinking, well, I'll, I'll kill Balaam when he comes to this spot. Once again, the donkey saw the angel of the Lord and kept Balaam from harm. He wouldn't go where he wanted him to go. And then the third time, the angel of the Lord moved on ahead and stood in a narrow place and was going to strike Balaam there. And when the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, it lay down under Balaam, and Balaam was angry and beat him with the staff. Now, if that's not weird enough, the angel being spotted by the donkey and the donkey trying to thwart the angels killing his master. In verse 28, the Lord opened the donkey's mouth and it begins to speak to Balaam. And Balaam doesn't respond, you know, what's wrong with you, donkey? He, he actually answers uh, the donkey. So the donkey says, what have I done to you to make you beat me these three times? And Balaam answered the donkey and said, you've made a fool of me. If I had a sword in my hand, I'd kill you right now. Now, that's very, very bizarre, this exchange. The donkey replied to Balaam, Am I not your own donkey, which you've always ridden to this day? Have I been in the habit of doing this? Balaam answers, No. Then the Lord opens Balaam's eyes, and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the road with his sword drawn. At this point, Balaam realizes he was facing imminent death. And he fell down, face down, and uh, before the angel, the angel asked him, why have you been beating your donkey? You know, your donkey has basically spared your life. I'd have killed you by now if it were not for that donkey. Balaam repents, and then the angel of the Lord says, go with these men, but speak only what I tell you. Now, friends, several things here. You've got to wonder if angels are able to be perceived by other animals other than donkeys. In other words, this episode, clearly the donkey perceived what men could not and saw the angel of the Lord. And so it makes you wonder, you know, are are donkeys or other animals able to see into the spirit realm to see angels and demons? And uh, perhaps they are. But this donkey actually kept Balaam from being killed by the angel of the Lord. That, to me, that's very strange. The angel of the Lord came to kill Balaam and this donkey thwarted the angel of God, from from doing what he was sent to do, apparently. And so because Balaam was not killed, Balaam eventually saw the error of his ways and, and said, I've sinned, I repent. And so the angel of the Lord then says, go with the men, but speak only what I tell you. So friends, let me just back up and put a ribbon around this chapter. But there's going to be two more chapters dealing with Balaam, so we'll see what happens with him. But you've got to drill down and see that Balaam was doing the will of the Lord when he said, I can't go with you. The Lord told me not to go. But that wasn't the end of the story. When they came back with more money and more dignified officials, he wanted to get permission from God after God had already told him no. Now, doesn't that sound like us? Sometimes we recognize the will of the Lord, but we're looking for a better response, more to our liking you know, more to what we desire. And so we go back to the Lord and back to the Lord. And if if this story is to be an example for us, the example is saying the Lord might give you permission when he's already told you no, 
but it's to your harm, not to your benefit. In other words, the Lord's no means no. It doesn't mean come back later and I'll give you a different answer. So friends, search your heart and see if the Lord has told you no on anything um, that you're still trying to wheedle your way to get him to approve it. And you need to stop. So Lord, we recognize your no is no, your yes is yes. We recognize what you bless is blessed and what you curse is cursed. Lord, we want to be on the side of you that receives blessing. Help us to obey the first time and not seek a change of answer from you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Whole Word. It was brought to you by Whole Word Fellowship and the Northern Virginia House of Prayer. If you were encouraged, please share our podcast with your friends. We'd also appreciate it if you'd hit subscribe in your favorite podcast app and take a few moments to write a review. If you'd like more information on our church and our ministry, you can go to wholeword.net or wholewordpodcast.com for more information. Thank you again, and may the Lord Jesus bless you today and always.